I loved it. Uh, it uh, my parents suffered, particularly my mother. It's very humid in this world in the climate that she liked. Uh, but uh, as a kid, uh, I was roaming around on, on the streets uh, playing soccer every day, uh, just on the street. And uh, it was, uh, a, to me, a very happy childhood. I mean, it was totally free. We used to go, as I showed, I think in one of my beginning slides, we used to go to the Tigre Delta, uh, where uh, there was an island that was owned by friends of ours, and it was a jungle. And you could just go wild, and uh, the kids would just shed their clothes and become cannibals. It was amazing. And uh, it was a time where we weren't you know the 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 what's what's prevalent now this worry about something happening to the kids is over protection i guess for good reason because statistically you're saving kids lives uh wasn't there so we got into all kinds of potential trouble but you know i mean not everybody gets hurt uh so you know i started a few fires <laughs> and so forth but uh so that was, uh, I enjoyed Argentina. And uh, leaving Argentina was really uh, a big of a blow in retrospect, psychologically to me. Didn't really like leaving Argentina and therefore I never, well I shouldn't say that, but I, you know, going to Germany was the, this change I didn't like. So it took me a while to, uh, to warm up to the German system, which is very, very different. Uh, I mean, it's the classic difference between Hispanic and uh, Alemanic. Uh, very much more strict, less exuberant, less spontaneous type of culture. It took me a while to figure out that there are other aspects that the Hispanics did not have that are part of the northern psyche, particularly German psyche, and so uh, that was okay. But uh, I, uh, I actually always liked Italy and France um, better. And so now I'm married to a French woman, but uh, I have girlfriends in both countries, uh, way more than in, in Germany. And it's just attractive. Um, what were your most memorable experiences as an undergrad at the University of Munich? And uh, what did you enjoy the most, and what did you despise the most? If there are most memorable experiences? Well, when I signed up. I was late uh, to enroll in university, and this was done by just showing up and filling out the forms, and that was it. And I had uh, finished an uh, excellent high school diploma, so they looked at my grades and immediately were delighted. But as I approached the chemistry department, there was a fire brigade outside, and uh, uh, ambulances, and they would, uh, as I walked towards the entrance, they were carrying out the guy who, an inorganic chemist, a postdoc, who worked with one of the inorganic professors. And they had an explosion and he was bleeding all over and stuff. And I remember very clearly my reaction, which could have been, oh my god, I don't, <laughs> you know, my reaction was, this is what I want to do. <laughs> this is exciting stuff. So you can see that I had a mindset that perfect match with the challenges to come. Uh, then, I mean, the other one was political involvement. We were all communists, of course, or socialists, and uh, there, and it was the time of the revolution, you know, the, all the, the whole young generation. This is something you can't possibly uh, really uh, relate to completely, but I've I presume you can by reading about it. The older generation was post-war. They were all really uh, not only starchy from way before the war, but they had really the war had prevented an evolution of thought and uh, new ideas and so forth. 
and after the war, they were all rebuilding. Okay? And so there we are born, you know, I was born in 46, so we were all born into this scenario. And for us, there was no war, and things were getting better and better. There was economic, more and more well-being. We profited from that. And so we had the luxury of dreaming and thinking wider. And uh, things became more international, and then rock and roll hit the fan. And that was the, I think, the, the major vehicle by which the young generation identified. And, uh, you know, from Bob Dylan to the Rolling Stones to uh, uh, them and all the bands, uh, revolutionary bands of the day, some of which still are, are still around. Uh, and uh, and there was a, cu a culture clash. Uh, all of us. I mean, you know, I had big fights with my dad, and uh, my mom, the South American, was more relaxed about all of that. She 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 watched me with amusement. But I, you know, I started growing my hair long, and, uh, and in those days, uh, you know, hair like yours was already uh, offensive. You know, I mean, they were basically. Oh, my. Can you tell us more about your family? My family now, you mean? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, at age 42, 43, I met my wife, my, what became my wife. <coughs> she was on a visit here and uh, was instant uh, love. And, uh, and so we uh, started a family a few years later. Uh, and. Uh, it was, uh, it was spectacular. I mean, I've been uh, carousing and a womanizer for uh, ever since before that. And uh, I, I guess I was tired of it. Uh, the book had come out. I bought a Ferrari. <laughs> and there was a certain amount of uh, something was missing. And I always loved kids. Uh, but, you know, you have to have the right frame of mind and then you have to find the right person to with a similar frame of mind or dissimilar uh, as the case may be but some, somebody is stimulating and so the, I guess I was just ready at that stage it just took a long time and uh, so you know we moved from uh, I had a house in Kensington with a hot tub typical bachelor pad overlooking the house could see all three bridges from the hot tub and stuff like that. To a, a much bigger house with a swimming pool. I still wanted the water in, uh, in the Oakland Hills. And, uh, and she's French, so I have a French family that we visit. We have a house in the Provence. Uh, it's blissful, really, totally blissful. And it was really actually at that stage also that I realized that with 35 people, you can't devote the time that you need to, so I started cutting there. Uh, when I got married, I cut five people. When Paloma arrived, uh, another five. When Julian arrived, another five. So I cut in half. And then I kept that for a long time. And it's only very recently that I decided it's still too much work. And I'm, because I'm doing other things, I, I'm the chief editor of a journal, the book, uh, and uh, I like the involvement with the kids. So that is one of the privileges that you have when you start a family late. As Alex Pines, my colleague, told me, the advantage of having kids my age is that you can be a father and a grandfather at the same time. And there's something to that. You're much more settled. Uh, there's financial security, so you don't have to worry about that. And so you can devote time uh, to, to this. And and I do, you know. I mean, this morning I spent uh, the parent-teacher conference before Paloma, and uh, uh, tonight I'm driving my son to a dance that he has, and he is a fencer, and uh, so I, I take him to fencing, and we go uh, travel. He, he competes at the national level, so we went to the nationals in Atlanta last year, and stuff like that. So it's blissful.